to Mock the Week. I'm Dara Breen, and joining me this week are Josh Whittakam, Zoe Lyons and Matt Ford, Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Milton Jones. <laughs> we start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Matt, which category would you like? World news, please. OK, world news it is. The answer is petrol, money and drugs. What is the question? Is it the three middle names of Princess Charlotte? <laughs> Is it what three things might a Greek keep in a chicken? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Is it what do gangsters play instead of rock, paper, scissors? <laughs> Is it what three things are keeping Keith Richards alive? <laughs> Is it what in the sound of music are the Von Trapp's family's real favourite things? <laughs> <laughs> what, are the th what are the three characters called on a packet of Colombian Rice Krispies? <laughs> Things are we being paid in this evening? <laughs> All together in one big bucket. Yeah. 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 What will the motto be for the Qatar World Cup? Is it complete the song? Hugh Pew, Barney McGrew. That's scan. That probably scan very well. It's a much better song, wouldn't it? It would have been very good. <laughs> what <laughs> are the three main aisles in a Bolivian Waitrose? <laughs> Does they know the, uh, you, know, you, know, you know that tattoo you got that you think says peace, love and harmony? <laughs> <laughs> is it to do with Greece? It is to do with Greece. Is it what three things are they worn in Greece are about to run out of? Ah, very good. Thank you very much, Ed Burr. That's excellent. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for is what items are at risk of running out in Greece after Sunday's crucial vote on the EU's bailout terms? This is news that 61% of the Greek population voted against accepting the strict austerity measures proposed by the EU. There's now a real risk that the country will run out of money, fuel and medicine. So what does it all mean for Greece? It's ridiculous now. It, the whole thing is just going on. It is like a soap opera. I don't, I don't watch the Eurozone crisis now, day to day. I wait till Sunday and I watch the Omnibus edition. <laughs> <laughs> This thing of just referring to the Greek exit as Grexit, it just is like, are you that, in that much of a hurry that you couldn't say a third syllable? <laughs> <laughs> if, the British, if the British exit happens, it's going to be called Brexit. It sounds like a cheap form of Lego, or what the Greek Prime Minister does every time he meets Angela Merkel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get this thing that you can... I didn't know that you could reject banks' demands. If I'd known that, my whole life would have been different. <laughs> if I'd been able to go to the bank and go, well, I do owe you ten grand, but I really like my lifestyle. It could be, but it could be a mis-selling scandal, doesn't it? Because I don't, as far as I'm aware, Greece was never made to sign that box and said, your home is at risk if you do not keep <laughs> the repayments. You think they're waiting for the PPI? Uh, yeah, the, I think they're okay, okay. PPI. Yeah. That's the one thing that they'll bail them out of. Apparently the Greek government have admitted that living in their past is their Achilles heel. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting that reaction, no, were no. <laughs> Oxy, they went oxy to that. Yeah. Uh, I think it's definitely a case that if they want to bail, they get bail themselves out, like whatever, they really just have to invoke copyright law on all the stuff they invented some yeah. time ago now, right, but that they definitely invented, like democracy, triangles and gays. <laughs> uh, and if they... <laughs> no. Philosophy as well, the birthplace of philosophy, isn't it? Or yeah. was it? Yes, yes. Oh, you know. well. <laughs> 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 well, I think that there is a professional philosopher at home going, that's not what philosophy is! <laughs> <laughs> it's not just going, or is it? <laughs> I, think a, I think there's a lot of opportunities in Greece, actually. I'm going to start a band called Cash Machine, because people will be queuing around the block. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we've been told, if we go on holiday to Greece, that we to take lots and lots of money with us. Yes. To rub it in? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's to pay your kidnappers. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a ploy behind the you know, telling tourists to bring as much cash with them as they possibly can, because they know there'll be a load of overweight old British tourists there with massive bum bags of cash around the front. They're basically just sitting human ATM machines. That's all they are. <laughs> <laughs> your mugger's line-up mug line behind the tourists uh, was one of them goes, no, 60 euros each. Yeah, yeah. That is a limit <laughs> for mugging these people. That's it. <laughs> Someone started yeah. a crowdfunding for Greece, and it's got less than the Crystal Maze. <laughs> oh, so, God. Because, no, because people would prefer to go 
to the Aztec Zone than Athens. That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said to you. I can take you to the Aztec Zone or Athens. You'd be in there like a whip it, darling. Yeah. Yeah. I would. You'd choose... be shooting a sandbag with a bamboo. I would choose a mind puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> I am already wondering which little square I'm going to go into. Yeah, yes, can. What I love They're is like a whip it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've known him for a long time. Dara has never done anything like a whip. It. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly hard. <laughs> you love. You've never seen them shit in a park. <laughs> I think Look, I am not... <laughs> and he does it like a great dame. <laughs> so he locks eyes with you when you do it. <laughs> this is for you. This is for you, Burn. I'm glad we've dealt with Greece. Yeah. Yeah. Has anybody noticed Dara's eye, by the way? Is it off-putting? Do you think the people at home will be concerned? <laughs> what has happened? I do this to say a little start now. It's got infected. So is that really it? <laughs> no, it's a... It's a has it's Brian a... Cox been beating you again? <laughs> Look into the telescope, he said. Look hard into the telescope. <laughs> and he bruised my eye, ramming it into the shit. Go on. <laughs> that hurt you. That's my good eye, Brian. That's my good eye. He's just trying to turn you into Patrick Moore. There's a way to get me an eye patch. That, like, this would be, because this would be much more subtle if I played that. <laughs> I presented the entire show like that, because I've got a tiny infection in the eye. <laughs> to be fair, I have, I, you know, I have a secret <laughs> desire to have an eye patch. You know, I don't want to ever lose an eye. That, like, that's not how much I want to have an eye patch. But I think they're cool. Uh, <laughs> yes, something massively impressive. Because a guy with an eye patch, shit has happened. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> also you can do this. Sexy. Uh, <laughs> So the final part of yeah. undressing in a sexy way would be to take off the eye patch and <laughs> take my eye out. <laughs> in other news, what oh, do yeah. doctors want us to stop using? Their waiting rooms to sleep in. <laughs> People taking helium and they enjoy it and they speak very highly. <laughs> it's bizarrely, that's correct. Uh, which is... It's a finite resource. And it's needed for MRI scanners. And what not? Yes, very, mm. very true. Yeah, it's being used up on on fripperies like balloons mm. and squeaky voices. Yeah, although I'm doing this one without it. <laughs> so they're worried that instead of helium then in balloons, they will instead start using nitrous oxide in balloons. But nitrous oxide is laughing gas. So then that's the worry that the kids will be able to get high on their balloons if we end up having to do party balloons with nitrous oxide. But if you're worried about kids getting high on nitrous oxide balloons. You can surely get high on a helium balloon just, no, by, you... just by holding on to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was doing a gig at a festival, I think it was, and, I, and you could hear, when people are taking nitrous, like, you can hear it, because there's an audible because they do it into a balloon and into their mouth to give themselves a giggle. And people were doing it at my gig. Actually <laughs> 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 kind of a... It's a cruel heckle, isn't it? It's like, OK, I, I'm going to need something to get... <laughs> <laughs> Is it not people that, Ed, that you deliver one of your trademark jokes and the crowd will go... <laughs> 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 I only found out those little canisters that they suck it from are called whippets. Whip it, the little canisters of nitrogen. That's right, yeah. yeah they're called, called whippets. Whip Somebody said to me, the kids are sucking whippets in the park. And I was like, oh, my God, do I need to call the RSPCA? <laughs> <laughs> By the way, how do scientists think the universe will end? Oh, well, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing called the Big Rip. Yes. The universe is sort of uh, is accelerating so fast and getting faster and faster and faster that eventually it will just rip itself apart. Yeah. Is that right? And that'll be the end. It's, they say, that, how do scientists now think? What other nonsense have scientists just made up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> about what might happen 20 billion years from now when no one's around to say, oh, you got that one wrong. It's just <laughs> nonsense that his mate Brian natters on about <laughs> to keep himself siphoning BBC funds. <laughs> 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 Me and Brian on the astronomy gravy train <laughs> uh, <laughs> with all those millionaires. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> making a rain. <laughs> look at look what the big bang now, bitches. <laughs> what will happen though? I mean, they're saying this might happen in 22 billion years, but you can guarantee it'll be the day that the Greeks do pay back the last cent. <laughs> yeah. Finally, and finally. Ten cent. <laughs> it's called the big rip. The big rip is going to continue to accelerate. Faster it's and faster. An it's all actually an extension of, of the Big Freeze. And it's, it's either it? that or the Big Crunch. Yeah, it's, it's Are they all the same thing? Uh, no, Big Freeze would happen first, then the Big Rib would possibly happen after that. And when is big, big Yellow Storage from that? That is uh, <laughs> just off the M4 in Hounslow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then there's the, there's the Big Inns, where the whole universe just goes into Panto for the rest of its life. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, big ears! Wow, that was too long a journey for me. That was a bit, there was a lot, there was a leap there. I agree with that. Tell me that joke again, Ed, I got some...
I know. Thanks. Now, now they're going to have to broadcast my bad joke for your good. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing that can happen to an idiot. You pick on Brian Cox, you pick on me, right? <laughs> That's the way this works, my friend. <laughs> the, at the end of that round, the point's going to Matt Zoe and Josh. <laughs> Now we play a round called Grease Frightening. <laughs> <laughs> this game involves Zoe and Milton, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round's a stand-up challenge. I launch the Wheel of News, and whoever chooses the stuff, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. OK, let's spin the wheel for our first topic. And the topic is exercise. We all know we need to do more exercise. I mean, we've now got the fattest kids in Europe. I'm not going to make fun out of obese children. I've learnt not to do that. They will come down on you like a ton of bricks. <laughs> I didn't like exercising as a kid. When I was a kid, I was made to go swimming in, in a pool that had a Veruca pool before you got into it. The Veruca pool. Do you remember the Veruca pool? They actually called it the Veruca pool. <laughs> you can't encourage children to walk in something that's called a Veruca pool. It's like offering somebody the use of your chlamydia flannel, isn't it? <laughs> Exercise a bit more now. I've started doing yoga because apparently it increases your flexibility and spirituality. And I've got to be honest, it's pretty good. I'm now so good at the downward facing dog, I have on occasion caught glimpses of my own third eye. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually did, I did a half marathon though uh, a, few, a few months ago, which was, it was pretty good. You know, I, I, don't be overly impressed, which you're clearly not, but um, <laughs> I only finished yesterday, so there's clearly a lot of work to be done. <laughs> I did, it for, I, did, I did the run for charity, and I know a lot of people are doing things for charity. You can't just exercise now, can you? You've got to do it for a good cause. And I get a lot of those emails. I know we all do. You know, will you sponsor me? Will you sponsor me? I'm like, what are you doing? I'm flip-flopping up Kilimanjaro for diarrhoea. <laughs> How going across the Arctic for trapped wind, are you? <laughs> Don't do that. I mean, the last London Marathon, it cost me an absolute fortune, because I sponsored loads of friends, right? I gave one friend 20 quid because he was doing it for cancer research, another friend 20 quid because he was doing it for heart disease, another one 20 quid because he was doing it for diabetes. In the end, it was actually cheaper for me to join Booper. <laughs> <laughs> OK, that leaves us with Milton. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. And the subject is work. I didn't think I'd get a loan from the bank for my knitting business, but when I turned up actually wearing one of the balaclavas... <laughs> I used to be a weatherman. In fact, does anyone want to buy a broken barometer? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> if there'd been a mix-up, my uncle could have ended up as the next president of the United States. He's an undertaker in the army, or Barack Obama. <laughs> Soldiers, of course, very emotionally repressed. Sometimes you see one of them go into the middle of a parade ground and shout, Attention! <laughs> <laughs> what he needs is a hug. <laughs> well, that's what I thought. <laughs> My dad, he was a soldier, so, of course, as a family, we're always moving around a lot, because uh, he used to use us for target practice. <laughs> Six hours I had to wait in the other day for the electrician until he opened the cupboard under the stairs and I was able to leap out at him. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was a policeman, I was asked to seal off an area, and I went... <laughs> That's all right, thank you. Thank you. Well done. Point there for Little Jones. Come on back. OK, the next one is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening, so what's going on here? They unveiled the banker on Deal or No Deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's George Osborne delivering the budget, surrounded by all his friends. <laughs> was it Mr Bean sets off on a picnic? <laughs> <laughs> is the caption quite simply, Osborne's trousers too short? <laughs> <laughs> or is he delighted that the front door doubles as a pause button? <laughs> <laughs> is it... George Osborne with his budget box, and he's delivering the budget this week. Yes, he is. Thank you very much, Jack. I think he should, because it is like the box from Deal or No Deal, I think it would be a lot more exciting if he did the budget like that. So he goes to the opposition leader, I'm going to cut two, bi two billion in disability benefit. Or you can have the cut that is in this box. <laughs> <laughs> deal or no deal? <laughs>
He could have a phone ringing next to him. Oh. Yeah. That would be bloody Brussels, I imagine, wouldn't it, darling? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the way things are going. Yeah, so they make all the decisions around here. <laughs> <laughs> bloody... Uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. 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 Josh, right, this, take it, this show's going to lurch to the right. Uh, <laughs> Everybody in my lifetime has unravelled in the weeks afterwards. So they get the one big hit, and everyone says, oh, actually, this, this sounds all right. And then it unravels. If you're going to lie in the first place, go triple large on it. Turn up in the comments and say, you know what? We've nailed it. We are all millionaires. <laughs> That's right. No one's skint anymore, and we've solved poverty. And at least have one day where people go, Osborne is a genius. <laughs> Just have the one day where you feel like a legend. I think yeah. that's where Greece went wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> In sporting news, who has been causing upset at this year's Wimbledon? Oh, was that naughty little Australian man? There was a naughty little Australian, Australian man. man, yes, there was. Yes. Rob Harris. No, he's not. <laughs> that would be genuinely <laughs> disturbing. <laughs> wicka, 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 wicka. You can hear him coming now. Wicka, 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 wicka. He's, he's already been caught in the net. <laughs> There's been a load of Aussie fanatical fans yes. in the stands who've been making loads of noise. And look to that picture, Boris Johnson has just joined yeah. the fans. Yeah. Yeah. Well. The big question about them is how do they get so many tickets? It's yes. impossible, isn't it? Well, they're all working in the bar, and that's their break. <laughs> <laughs> But they support Nick Kyrgios, don't they? They're called the Fanatics, yeah, yeah. aren't they? And they come in and they specifically support him. But he absolutely splits opinions. So in the Australian newspaper this week, there was a headline that went, Nick Kyrgios, breath of fresh air or a total dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> what has outraged villagers in the Forest of Dean? A swinging festival. There was a swinging festival, do you know what it was called? Swingfield. Swingfield 2015 yeah. took place. Yeah, but it's like, they had to call it that. It was either that or Creamfields. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what they'll end up with, isn't it? I mean, it'll be the only festival you need wellies, even if it isn't raining. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> There's a quote from a, uh, from a local, a concerned local, uh, saying that they'd fancy be trying to sneak into the festival through their back garden. Right? And they said, no, this is unacceptable. We, we're very concerned about who will come onto our land. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a genuine quote. Did you see it. one of the locals complained that the music was too loud? Surely. <laughs> but don't tell them to turn the music down. That's far worse. It was £165 uh, for the festival uh, for the entire weekend, and they promised a themed zone, uh, a sauna, a hot tub. I'd use that on Friday afternoon and then let it go. Uh, <laughs> I was just imagining, imagining a field with a massive bowl of keys in the middle. That's how I was imagining. <laughs> it's the only festival where the car parks are busier than the fields. <laughs> it's revolting. I don't even use the toilets at festivals. I thought of using half the other festival goers is just... <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd only... I'd insist it was someone with a day ticket, I think, if I was going. <laughs> How did they not call it Astonbury? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I, my vote was for Tratitude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the, uh, and in fact, the most popular queue was for the pulled pork stand. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. I've taken some elements and brought them together in that joke. Uh, <laughs> put it on again. Put it on again. Put it on again. Yeah, yeah, put, put it on, on again. again. Go on, go on. Oh, you look, you look funny. You look funny. Do the thing where you look funny again. You know when you make you look like the guy for the back of a fucking bus? And for, for three years, everyone sends you photographs of a cartoon man on the back of the bus. Every day on Twitter. Hey, Dar, I saw you in Manchester today. Huh? Click up. Oh. Bollocks, that's bad. <laughs> Do that with an eye patch, and then for years, every eye patch person in the universe, I will get sent him on Twitter. Happy? There. I think I'm my nose. Is that all right? <laughs> that all right? Oh, I hope my nose. It's quite oh, wow, it looks like I'm wearing a G strip. Uh... <laughs> if the marketing people are clever, that bloke on the back of the megabus is going to have an eye patch by next week. <laughs> um... <laughs> Now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject yeah. is... Unlikely things for a sports commentator to say. Embarrassing, humiliating, bringing shame on the sport. Welcome to Wimbledon Today with me, Claire Balding. <laughs> ah. And it all comes to this. After years of training and preparation, I'm commentating on the poxy water polo. <laughs> Mo Farah has apologised for his association with substances that the British public regard as abhorrent and has said he will never advertise corn again. <laughs> Welcome back to the golf, where Tiger Woods apparently travels with two inflatable sex dolls now in case he gets a hole in one. <laughs> He's found a chocolate biscuit down the back of the sofa, but he's not going to celebrate because it's his old club. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
and he's resting two balls on the cushion there, which is why he won't be allowed back into Ike. <laughs> And he pops the cork and he's spraying everyone with champagne. Welcome to the first Conservative budget since 1996. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are at the Crucible, all burning to death! <laughs> 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 well, that was the speed skating, and now crack cocaine curling! <laughs> The American and the Russian are out in front, and here comes the Finn. Yes, they're going to swim a lot faster now. The shark is chasing them. <laughs> and so they've brought up a curtain around the horse that fell earlier, but no, we've got good news. He's moved to a farm in the countryside. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are at the Rugby League. It's tough, man. It's better than Rugby Union, and at the same time, ever so slightly more gay. <laughs> 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 and this decision's going to a touch judge, and yes, it's sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is his third attempt with a bar at this height. <laughs> nope, still can't get served. <laughs> and here come the two Red Bulls, which is what you'll need to keep yourself awake during Formula One. <laughs> I'm joined here by Balding, or Alan Shearer, as he likes to be known. <laughs> Raikkonen now on super soft. The Viagra simply not working. <laughs> and if you want to find out what this function key on the keyboard does, join us after the break on F1. <laughs> and after the break, join me, Claire Balding, presenting everything. I present everything now. Everything is mine. Everything. <laughs> OK, the next topic is unlikely things to hear on a gardening programme. <laughs> There's something about eating food that's come from your own garden. This is quite a hearty stew I've made out of a squirrel I shot with an air rifle. <laughs> <laughs> well, to answer your question, I tend to keep mine on a hose reel, but then I'm very lucky down there. <laughs> These pine trees smell suspiciously of air freshener. So we don't splash out on expensive gnomes. Do what I do and just simply varnish some small children I found playing in the park. <laughs> I call this my Blue Peter garden because it's the first place that I blew Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, the trick is to get your pitchfork right through it before you take it and throw it back over the fence. <laughs> We've had a letter from Mrs Smith of Epsom who's asked us to identify something that she has found in our garden. Well, Mrs Smith, that's a dog turd. <laughs> um, I've got a letter here from Maureen in Doncaster who's asking a question about herbs. Um, in response to your letter, Maureen, I would recommend about £200 for an ounce, and if it's really good shit, £300. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is the wheelbarrow, and tomorrow I'll show you another sexual position. <laughs> It's uh, quite simple to take up an old patio. All you do is li just leave it. Let's <laughs> not talk about it ever again. <laughs> I woke up in a field of aubergines the other day, and I thought none of these baby seals have faces. <laughs> <laughs> right, welcome to the UKIP garden. Sod the lawns, let's concentrate on them borders. <laughs> So, you could use a lawnmower or a strimmer, although I would recommend waxing. <laughs> Take the shovel, force it right down like that, save your fortune in vet fees having it put down professionally. <laughs> Help! I've been attacked by pineapples! Help! Help! <laughs> I like to plant my herbs in alphabetical order. People say to me, how do you find the time? I said, it's there next to the sage. At the end of that the point is going to end here in no time. <laughs> and that's the end of the show. This week's winners are Josh Winnicombe, Zoe Lyons and Matt Forge.
Congratulations to Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Nick and Jones. Thank you for watching. I'm Darrell Green. Good night.